Boom. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari He Om Shruti Smruti Puranana Malayam Namami Vopashankaram Navarna Navarna Shramachara Dharmaha You get a visarga there when you break it. Name Dharana Dhyana Yoga Dayopi Anatma Shreyaham Mama Dhyasahanat Tadeko Vashishta Shivakke Valoham So this entire text and every verse is about myself, aham. And I have to know myself. Why should I know myself is already discussed in detail in the first class. If you do not know yourself, then there is no basis for thought and action, speech and action. That is what life is. Life is thought, speech and action. Mano va kaya. Karmani, karma is the movement of life only. Therefore, uh, that if that is what life, uh, then uh, you do not know yourself. Say, you do not know yourself. Then whatever thought comes, the basis of that thought is ignorance. And then speech, and then action. That is how we live. That's why for us, action becomes a bondage. Lokoyam karma bandhanaha. You act, that is fine. But you act without knowing yourself properly. Therefore, it becomes a bondage. So, some people, uh, they argue, why, why this self-knowledge and all that? Why not uh, be active and do things? So, karma, you know, do karma. Or do yoga or whatever. Do bhakti. Why this knowledge? So this, uh, this argument is like saying, uh, when you wake up early in the morning, why to put the light on? Do your job. You want to make a cup of coffee, make it. Why do you want to put the light on? So that is, how is that argument? Same thing. Because when you do not put the light on and start preparing the coffee in the kitchen, you may be knowing a little here and there. So you are likely to tip over something and fall down. Or you are likely to hit a, a wall or a table or whatever with your head. In, a, in many, many ways you are likely to hurt yourself. Therefore the best thing is, even if preparation, if preparation of coffee is delayed by say 30 seconds or one minute, doesn't matter, first put the light on. Then do what you will. Similarly, you should know yourself and then think, speak and act. And without understanding of oneself, there is no basis left now for speech or action or even thought. Therefore, you should know. So that is how the expression self-knowledge, atma jnanam, has become very popular. But then, uh, <clears throat> what is... Uh, Jnanam first. We will come to Atma Jnanam. But first, what is Jnanam? Jnanam ye kya hota hai? Jnanam is, you know something by perception or by inference. Like uh, you see the smoke on the summit and then infer the fire inside the mountain. That is knowledge. Or you perceive directly. Either you perceive or you infer. Sometimes the infer can be called conceive. You can say that. It rhymes, you know. Either you perceive or conceive. And so that is how you know. And what you know 
that is called known. You describe it. What you know already, either through perception or conception, you describe it. And that description is called knowledge. That is what knowledge is. Right? Oh no, there is something more than that. What? There is a book. There is knowledge in the book. Now, that, that book, knowledge in the book, how, how it came there? How did it come there? So, somebody else had that knowledge in his head and he put it in the book. You have to say that. Or you want to say it came from above? How do you want to say? You want to say it came from above. That becomes a belief. Now, you don't call it Jnanam anymore. You call it belief. No, no, it came from above, but it came from above into someone's head. The head must be there. Okay? Without the intervention of the head, whether it came from above or whatever, you cannot have anything called knowledge. So, in somebody's head it came and he has recorded it. Now, but he recorded it in a given language, whether Sanskrit or English, whatever. And uh, you should have the language in you. Language is a skill. And so you, you train yourself in that language, you acquire that skill. And using that skill, the language that is there in the book, the knowledge that is there in the book, contained in that language, you gather it. Because you have the knowledge, you have the skill, of that language. And so you acquire that knowledge and put in your head. That is the third way of acquiring knowledge. So three ways, that's all, three. No, no, there are four, five, six, seven, eight. They all come under the second conception. Okay? Three, two inside, one outside, three ways. You can uh, expand it uh, to, this is a game. No upamana, and not only anumana, inference, but upamana, then arthapatti, and then anupalabdhi. You stop there, but there is always somebody, he says abhinaya, the bharata, natya, shastra, vetta, bharataha. He puts his own uh, pramana called abhinaya, and then the pauranikas, why should they lag behind? So, they have come out with some other means of knowledge called Sambhavaha. All of these, some more also could be there. All of these come under the single word conception. Therefore, two inside, perception and conception. One outside, the book. Uh, or uh, the vision that is uh, described in a book by someone. So, the, uh, called Shabda. These are the three ways. You acquire knowledge, and that knowledge that you have acquired, you give, you bring it out as a description. This is knowledge, right? Do you agree with this description of this this uh, uh, as, uh, this uh, uh, description of what is called knowledge? Do you agree with it? Are you satisfied with it? Now, if that is what is knowledge. Meaning, knowledge is a description coming from the memory. Memory, you know, you have put it inside, means it is memory. Or brain cells or whatever. And uh, so it could be perceptual or conceptual or coming from a book. If that is what knowledge is, then please listen carefully. There is no such thing as self-knowledge. Did you get it? Then why do you look at me like that? <laughs> yeah, with the grumpy faces? Yeah. There is no, if that is what knowledge is, then there is no such thing as, such thing that is called self-knowledge. There is no animal called self-knowledge. There is no such thing. <laughs> because, the self cannot become an object of your knowing. It is just not possible. It is a huge contradiction. Therefore, there cannot be any self-knowledge, if that is what knowledge is. On the other hand, you can know certainly what all you are not. That you can know. So, we have arrived 
into negation. So, the word knowledge applied in a positive sense, it just fails to describe the self, to come anywhere near the truth of the self. Therefore, now what is left is the negation is the only way left for you. Therefore, then you may ask negation, will it serve the purpose entirely? Yes, it is enough to know what you are not. You need not know what you are. We are in the Shishloki, don't forget that. Okay? So you need not know what you are. Because uh, what you are can never be described. When it cannot be described, except as total negation. I am not this, I am not that. Only that kind of a description you can have. Other than that, the usual description coming out of a knowledge that is acquired by you or anybody else is not possible. It cannot touch the self. So now what is left? I assume, I hope that you have understood what I tried to say. If you have an open mind, then only you can understand. If you have already some serious conditioning about it, you will not understand me. And or you don't want to understand either. So, so uh, assuming that you got what I said, all you can say is, I am not this, I am not that. That is all what you can say. You cannot meaningfully say, I am this or I am this. This is what I am. You cannot say that statement. You may be still saying it, but meaningfully you cannot say, this is what I am. Because that this, that you are talking about this, this is idam. And uh, there is a, a, a definition or a, uh, there is a way of saying about aham. Aham and idam, they are diametrically opposite. Uh, to the extent that even an iota of thisness, idanta, cannot creep into aham. So, table, this table, is there a hum in it? No. Body, this body, is there a hum in it? Yes, I am the body. So, I am the body. Now, when you say, I am the body, I am this, that is what you are saying, I am this body. Now, into I am, thisness has come. There is a ahanta, ayam is there, but thisness also has come into it. The moment thisness has come into it, you have to dismiss it. Therefore, you have you can only say, I am not this body. Then come to the mind, I am the mind. Suppose you say, no, you cannot be the mind, because the mind is this. Ropandrushyam lochanam dhribdrushyam dhribdrushyam Drishyadhivurtayaha Sakshi Drugevanatu Drishyate. Just a verse I recited, don't worry. I, it, I already told all about it. Therefore, you cannot meaningfully say, This is what I am. Therefore, it just makes no sense. When you say, This is what I am, it just makes no sense. Because what you can point out as this, or that, doesn't matter. If it is near idam, this, far off idam, that, that is the only difference. So what you can point out as this or that cannot be yourself. It is very simple. Surely you cannot be something else, because what you call this or that is something else, and you cannot be something else. Therefore, we conclude as you are nothing perceivable and you are nothing conceivable, and you are nothing imaginable. Okay? But without you, there is no perception, there is no inference, there is no imagination. In fact, there is nothing without you. But you cannot be perceived or inferred or described or imagined. So, therefore, what you look at yourself, you observe the heart feeling, I mean the emotional part I'm saying. It need not be emotion, the feel, the depth. So you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you observe or you are aware 
the heart feeling you are aware the mind thinking and you are aware the body acting this shows this much this is enough to prove that the feeling is not you the thought is not you and the body is not you therefore uh, this is the way the self knowledge has to be approached you have to approach it with this with the with negation uh -huh. that is what we are doing here, but i am giving you different uh, facets of this negation you see once i was addressing a small group of people they were all students of francis there is a gentleman called francis i think he is in colorado he is a vedantin don't think that vedantins are in south india only they are everywhere okay don't be uh, that uh, that narrow mindedness doesn't work francis is a good vedantin he speaks tremendous sense and there are many students including in the diaspora who take classes from him and so i was in tampa florida and then all of these francis students who were in tampa they attended the class because they have an open mind it is a vedanta guy has come oh vedanta guy has come let us see what he got to say so they all arrived and so there was a satsanga and in the satsanga one person asked me this question so what you reject i am not this what you reject it will it will be there it will be there and uh, it may get at you also <laughs> so you reject it and it is there in spite of you what rejecting it is there and that's why you rejected it in the first place but uh, even after rejecting it is there and it will get at you so so you are rejecting 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 so you are putting up a pile of things that are rejected uh, some are the, some of them are all of them together can get at you that is the question then i said uh, what we are doing is not rejection we are not rejecting anything this is not rejection this is negation here uh, what is negated is not there it is false you are negating the false you are neg not negating what is you are negating what is seen though it is not there you see the serpent which is not there and now it is imperative that you have to negate it in order to get out of the fear that the serpent engenders therefore uh, it is not a rejection so don't get this idea that he rejects this i, reje we, I do not reject anything and uh, negation is different from rejection so i wanted to say this point so that we will not get some such a problem of understanding so in vedanta you are you are not negating and you are not rejecting anything you are you see no no we are rejecting the body you are not rejecting the body you are negating the body body is false body is a name and form by medita through meditation by now you you must have understood that body is, there is nothing called body it is a stack in english you call it body therefore it gives a feeling that it is something and when i say you are not the body you get the feeling that you are rejecting something no you did not get it right first of all you have to get it right uh, body is not a thing body is a, an idea in the mind because uh, you pay attention to it you have to look closely people do not look closely they just gloss over and they follow only they don't to look at all they just follow and the the, the 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 person whom they are following if that person looks closely they are safe if that person also doesn't look closely they are lost this is how it happens you see uh, this is the problem of spiritual authority because uh, once uh, you you submit to spiritual authority you already have given up the the faculty of thinking now you lose it you don't use it therefore you lose it and uh, so and you are uh, you are uh, you are put into a complacency 
where uh, all thinking that is needed will be done by the spiritual authority. You need not do any thinking. This is how it operates. It is as bad as economic authority. This is spiritual authority. Anyway, there is a small digression. Therefore, you have to look closely. When, I say, when you say, I am not the body, you are not rejecting the body, which, uh, which is a thing. No. You are negating an idea called body. Body is an idea. Bhagavan Buddha described body as a wave. It is a wave. And wave, wave is not a thing. Wave is only a movement. Thing is something else. Body is an idea in the mind. It is not difficult at all to understand if you look closely. Because you have a thing called body only when you think of it. And when you do not think of it, you don't have a body. This is what I say. I hope people get it. When you are counting a rupee notes, you do not have a body. <laughs> rupee notes are there. Why? Because you are not thinking of the body. When they are playing soccer, they don't have a body. If they have a body, they cannot play soccer. It is like gladiators playing soccer, you know. They don't have a body. They only have a goal and football. That is all they have on the field. And uh, so, they don't have a body. That's why when uh, the players, uh, they get injured, uh, they don't feel any pain because they don't have a body. And when they feel pain, you know, when the play is stopped and all people come uh, and uh, surround him and then he is put on the stretcher, the doctor comes, then the pain begins. Because the soccer idea, the football idea, the goal idea is now replaced by the body idea. Then only they will feel the pain. Till then they won't feel the pain. You see, there was a car accident. And the person, the car went and fell into a ditch by the side of the road. And the person was injured. He did not know any pain. But then the ambulance came in 5-10 minutes. They started moving him from the wrecked car into the ambulance, then he started feeling tremendous pain. So, I am only trying to point out that body is an idea in the mind. I wish you look closely at it. Therefore, don't get obsessed with the body. When you are obsessed with the body, then body appears as a real thing. And when the body appears to you as a real thing, then what kind of Vedanta you are studying? There is no Vedanta left now. Now you believe that body is real, now Vedanta says I am not the body. So you are rejecting what is there and it will come back at you. Therefore you get a doubt. This is not Vedanta, so leave it alone. There is another Vedanta, Brahma Jagat Karanam. These issues will not be there in that. We are coming to that also in the other verse. I will come to that also. Therefore, People do not pay attention properly. They don't understand the spirit of negation correctly. So what you are negating, what is negation? Don't get, uh, don't get uh, carried away by the negative sense of the term. Negation. It, it seems to have a negative sense. And therefore every time uh, I am not this, I am not that, you have to shake your head, oh, oh I have to think. You don't be like that. It, it, it has, it seems to have a negative sense. There is no negative sense in it because you are negating. What is the negation? Negation can be defined as seeing the false as the false. Now what is negative in it? What is your problem in it? You should love it. Because uh, it is the falsehood which makes people suffer. Never the truth. You never suffer because of the truth. You suffer only because of the falsehood. In fact, the truth liberates. So when you know that you are not the body, you are liberated. And uh, you know what happens if there is sickness? You will know. You will know. When sickness happens, you will know what happens. First to get liberated, then we will see. Eh? So what happens if I am set free from the jail? We will see. First to get set free. You will see what happens. There is the open sky. And so, that is the spirit of negation that I thought I should bring to your notice. 
न मे धारणा ध्यान योगादयोपि टू मे देर इज नो धारणा ध्यान योगा इज समाधि बेस्ड ऑन द सीक्वेंस सो योगश्चित्तवृत्ति निरोध समाधि सो दे आर नॉट फॉर मे इट इज वेरी वेल सेड बिकॉज दि होल वर्ल्ड इज हंग ऑन दिस धारणा ध्यान समाधि थिंग अलि थ्री आर सेम त्रयम एकत्र संयम इट इज सूत्र फ्रम पतंजलि हिमसेल्फ आल दि थ्री आर टुगेदर सो दि जस्ट प्रोग्रेसिव प्रोग्रेसिव प्रोग्रेशन इन दि स्टेट्स ऑफ मैंड धारणा इज द स्टेट ऑफ मैंड देशबंध धारणा अंड लिटल ए लिटल मोर फोकस्ड मैंड इज ध्यान अंड द मैंड विच इज विच गोस इन टू ए कैंड ऑफ ए ट्रांस दट इज समाधि दीज थ्री आर देर धारणा ध्यान योगाद योपी अल दी थ्री आर डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ वट इज पॉप्युर्ली नोन एज मेडिटेशन ओके दे आर नॉट फॉर मे सो दट मीन्स यू डोंट नीड मेडिटेशन देन वॉट इज निधिध्यासन सो दट्स वै यू हेव टू लुक क्लोजली धारणा ध्यान समाधि दे आर डिफरेंट स्टेट्स ऑफ द माइंड वेर एज निधिध्यासनम इज एबाइडेंस इन युवर सेल्फ आत्मा देर फोर धारणा ध्यान समाधि आर मेंटल स्टेट्स आर मेंटल कैटेगोरीज इफ यू विल वेर एज निधिध्यासनम हेज नथिंग टू डू विद द माइंड यू बिगिन विद द माइंड ऑल राइट But you go beyond the mind and arrive into your swarupa. Therefore, nididhyasanam is all about atma. And uh, the yoga of Patanjali and the Hatha Yoga thing, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, etc. There are many books. So all this yoga, God bless, it, it has its own glory. It is not for me to say uh, that it is uh, uh, this or that. You are sitting in yoga nagari. Don't catch my nose, okay? Uh, so I have already enough trouble. <laughs> Don't create any further trouble to me, okay? So, but let me say this: uh, this Hatha Yoga, uh, Patanjali Yoga, including Patanjali Yoga, he is going to say na Patanjali. So it is not for me. Na me, me you can take a chaturthi vibhakti. Na not for me. Why not? Don't you want meditation? I have already answered that question. Our meditation is different. We are not a yoga, hatha yoga meditation people. The popular meditation is hatha yoga meditation only, or patam patan jala meditation. We are not that. We are Vedantic meditation people. We are nididhyasana people. So you see what happens is uh, you have to apply this principle of negation here also, because uh, many people talk about meditation. Many people, hmm? and when so many people are talking about meditation, so Vedantins uh, they also join the crowd. These Vedantins they don't seem to have any particular stand of their own. They are everywhere. Ganga tere, Ganga dasa ha, Yamuna tere, Yamuna dasa ha. You talk of karma, they are there. You talk of bhakti, they are there. You talk of yoga, they are there. You talk of atma, they are not there. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> What a pity it is! So you have to examine these things. So they are there also, kind of superficially. So they are everywhere. Why they are everywhere? You know why? Because they don't have their feet firm in anything. They don't have their feet firm. Very hilra ha ha. So. So Ganga Tere Ganga Da Saha, then he goes to Yamuna. He is not sure about Ganga anymore, so he becomes Yamuna Da Saha. Isa hai. So the Vedantin studying Vedanta, Tattva Bodha or whatever, and then he sees some karma going on. He gets very excited because this Tattva Bodha etc. It doesn't seem to have entered into his uh, system deep enough to keep him away from everything else. That is not the way to study Vedanta. So you have uh, your fingers in everything. Eh? So neither here nor there. Uh, 
That is not the way. Therefore, uh, people talk about meditation. Many people talk about meditation. What is this meditation that people talk about? It is one of the habits. Habit. So, like uh, people, they believe in a given God, right? They know a given God or they believe in a given God? How do you look at it? They believe in a given God. Why? It's a habit. Like in our childhood, we were, we were made to believe in Shiva. So early morning take bath and put so much of ashes on the face. Youth, you know, over enthusiasm is also there. So much of ashes. So the people, the village folk, just then they wake up and trying to clean their teeth and they look at this brahmachari with so much of ashes. Oh Lord Shiva himself is before <laughs> us. I saw like that. Therefore, we were putting so much of ashes. So why, what is that, uh, these ashes putting and what is this Lord Shiva? So, uh, Shivoham, Shivoham is different. Eh? This is not Lord Shiva. When you say Shivoham, that is not Lord Shiva. I have not yet explained it. That's why I told, uh, forget about uh, all the ten verses thing. So I have yet to explain this word Shiva. Therefore, uh, this uh, Shiva, as if Shiva has uh, descended from Kailas, this Brahmachari. And so, like that we used to feel. And what is the Shiva? Uh, what is, we never asked this question. Why ashes? We don't ask. Then why? What happened? Because parents believed in Shiva. Parents uh, pushed ashes, father puts ashes. Grandfather does the same thing. And therefore, we put ashes. And also there is another reason which I like. If you don't uh, put ashes, uh, the grandfather will rebuke you. That is a good enough reason to put ashes. And we have another reason. Amma used to say, unless you finish Sanjha Vandanam, no food. Okay. Then go and put some ashes. Finish it Sanjha Vandanam, give food. That is how we used to do Habit. It is a habit. People believe in a given God by habit, nothing else. Okay. Similarly, meditation also has become one of the habits. For example, they sit for 10 minutes a day yeah, in the morning in a quiet room and meditate. What they do there? Concentrate. So, Ekagrata. Jeshabandhas, Chattasya Dharana, etc. Ekagrata is a dhyanam, ekatanata, etc. That is what is called concentrate. What is concentration? You focus on one thing to the exclusion of everything else. That is concentration. You know, the con when you try to concentrate, the mind revolts. It never obliges you. Never, ever. You meditate for 10 years, your mind will be revolting the next day again after 10 years. It will be revolting. You want, you, uh, you put a demand on the mind, don't think anything except Shiva. Come on, think of Shiva, nothing else. So Shiva, uh, so Karpura Gauram, that is Shiva. I hope it is Shiva, okay? So that is the Shiva. You think of Shiva, an image. All are images. All are images. Shabda Chitram it is called. So you have an image put before your eyes, kind of, uh, by description. So Shiva is a uh, uh, cream colored, like Karpura Gauram. That is the Shiva. But there, elsewhere Shiva is a uh, Vilohitaha, Visheshana Lohitaha is very ready. Chelo, whatever. So that is the image of Shiva. And then you have a description. So that image, you give this image to the mind and say, O oh mind, focus on this only and nothing else. That is called concentration. There cannot be an effort which fails more than this effort. It is uh, bound to fail because mind is uh, like a tuning fork which vibrates 420 times per second. That is what mind is. 
वेरी चंचलम ही मन पार्थ श्री कृष्ण प्रमाथि बलवद्रुढ़म दट इज वॉट माइंड इज इट इज नॉट युअर माइंड एवरीबडी माइंड इज लाइक दैट सो वायोरिव निग्रह मे वायोरिव सुदुष्कर यू कैनाट होल्ड इट कैन यू होल्ड विंड यू मेक ए बंडल ऑफ विंड एंड होल्ड इट यू कैनाट इट विल स्लीप अवे can you make a bundle of water with your cloth go to ganga and make a bundle of water with the cloth will it remain there it will slip away same is the mind so uh, then shri krishna also says nigraha is a uh, it is not possible nigraha kingarishyati so this nigraha holding back the mind and mind follows speech and uh, action also but primarily the mind you cannot hold it back it goes in multiple directions and every single time you are defeated you ask the mind so concentrate on this the mind doesn't oblige you after 15 minutes you get up defeated but you become habituated it becomes a habit and habit or no habit it creates a conflict the conflict at the psychological level there is conflict at the verbal level we fight with each other and then there is conflict at the level of action that you do something which hurts the other person these are there anyway but conflict at the very thought level at the psychology level that is the uh, subtlest aspect of your existence and there is conflict in that subtlest aspect of your uh, life that is the conflict and that conflict dissipates all your energy whatever that means or enthusiasm so every single time you get up from this habit of meditation 10 minutes or 15 minutes in a quiet room in a corner by closing the room etc and you get up try to concentrate if not image a, a, a sound give a sound and repeat the sound concentrate means you have to fix the mind on the sound how will you fix it say om namah shivaya fix it how long will you fix it therefore say one more time uh, so same logic applies how long will you fix it second time also okay say third time how long you will fix it even the third time so say fourth time so put a mala and do thousand and eight times or hundred and eight times that is how you try to concentrate the mind on a sound it never works i am saying it but if you want to counter me saying no it works for me then god bless you i what i can do you have a different kind of mind which is not known in the shastra anywhere which is not known to mankind mankind knows the mind that i have described that is the only mind mankind knows therefore every single time you try to focus or concentrate the word concentrate i am very conscious of what i am saying and i am saying all this with some enthusiasm and some extra effort because i want you to know you have to know and do whatever you will i don't come to your room and check whether you are following what i said or not that is not the point i go my way but uh, it will be nice if you try to know don't block it don't uh, put an armor don't resist you listen to what the speaker says don't say yes the one who says yes is a follower and he doesn't get anything don't say no just leave it the way it is don't say yes don't say no think about it that is all you have to do therefore uh, uh, that is a definition of shravanam those who say yes don't know what is shravanam those who say no they don't know shravanam either those who say neither yes nor no they only know what is the shravanam so you you receive it don't block it don't resist it uh, you just listen to it and speak uh, think about it therefore what uh, what is called concentration so for concentration that, that is a, a chapter uh, in uh, patanjali yoga sutras samadhi padah samadhi translated into english concentration that is how they translate it if you see the books in english therefore this concentration it is an enormous effort at the subtlest level of the mind don't you see that because suppose you are saying om namah shivaya mind rem- remembers something mr shivaya it remembers 
and this Shivaya has taken a loan of thousand rupees and never returned it. That is what is your minimum. The moment you say all of a Shivaya, Shivaya never pays loans properly. He, you remember him, and then you curse yourself. Are, 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 what is Shivaya? Shut up, O oh mind. You, you should be more better than this. Come on, Om Namah Shivaya, do it. I am articulating something similar to that happens in the mind, and then you struggle. And after 108, I tried many a time, 108. And after 108, I noticed I took a log also. So sometimes 9 times, sometimes 11 times my mind was on that. The rest of the time, mind is elsewhere. It was having a free run. And then I got up, sad. Because I am a sincere student, very sad. And uh, there is conflict. I could not... I, come, I could not concentrate. That is the conflict. I wanted to concentrate, but I could not concentrate. That is what conflict is. This is how we live. And we, we try to fit the mind uh, on an image. Uh, and uh, sometimes the image is created by themselves. These meditators, they create their own image. And sometimes they the image is created by somebody else. The image is image. And uh, so, the image is offered to him by someone else. Sometimes uh, he may not even have personal contact with the, that someone else. The image is offered to him through propaganda. That is how it comes. So, you try to fix the mind on that. During those ten minutes, you try to control the mind. You try to fix the mind into a mold. And it doesn't fit. The mind wants to go back and forth. And you battle with the mind. And that's why it uh, dissipates your inner energy. This is the game that these meditators are playing. Okay? They are playing this game everlastingly. And they call it meditation. That is, that, this meditation not for me. Name dharana dhyana yoga yopi. Because uh, in this meditation, there is so much focus on the mind uh, that the, you do not even uh, think of uh, the higher. Because you, you are so badly caught in, at the level of the mind, it doesn't occur to you that there is, mind is not the thing. Mind is false. Mind is not the thing. The thing is uh, beyond the mind. But you don't go beyond the mind. You are with the mind only. And concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. And it becomes a habit. And if you don't do meditation on a given day, you feel bad about it. Today I missed my meditation. Uh, you see, suppose you miss your cup of coffee, it will have some physiological effect. I can understand that. You should have your cup of coffee. This meditation, it doesn't have any physiological effect. But in psychologically, you feel good that you had your session of meditation. Fifteen minutes, uh, sit in a corner, close the door, warn the people in the house, don't make noise, I am doing meditation. <laughs> and then after meditation, you have your nice cup of coffee. You know that you, the meditation did not work today also. <laughs> and so it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. Like you worship a God that you believe in. So it becomes a habit. Habit is another name for ignorance. Do you know that? What you don't know, what you are not aware of, you convert it into habit. Therefore, this is the meditation. So, Shankara said, not for me. Chodo. Keep it aside. How well he said. So, um, the, the meditation, you see, uh, you can, uh, if meditation helps you in Nididhyasana, uh, which is also translated as meditation, so you uh, examine the mind in a way that you do not create any conflict. I have to say that because in concentration there is conflict because the mind do not, does not oblige. Whereas uh, in awareness, be aware of the mind. Be aware. A thought comes, okay, I, I did not invite the thought and I don't mind if the thought goes. I don't have any objection if the thought lingers for a while. So like that, you are aware. In a, awareness versus concentration. 
you have to understand that. If you understand that, then you can say along with Shankara, Name Dharana Dhyana Yoga Yoga. You can say that. You should say that. You should not say Shankara said Name Dharana. Are Shankara said what he said upon what about you? I don't know anything. Shankara said Name Dharana. You should not be like that. <laughs> so this Pauradika say he will be saying something. So Shiva was dancing. And Parvati was very unhappy with him for whatever reason, and therefore she did not join the dance. And so suddenly it occurs to him, what I am talking? <laughs> Probably it occurs to him. Probably. Therefore he slips out in Telugu, Ta. It is said that Parvati did not join the Shiva. It is said. So he just carefully wriggles out of any responsibility upon himself. Because he doesn't, he is not speaking what he knows. He is speaking what he got from hearsay or what he got from propaganda, if you will. So let us call a spade a spade for a change. Therefore, um, this you have to know the distinction between awareness vis a vis concentration. Concentration is conflict and it drains you of your energy. But uh, you do not see all these things because you have converted into a habit. That's why these concentration people are very frustrated people. You have to be very careful with them. Because they are very frustrated. So, and uh, because they are struggling with it, and it doesn't yield results, uh, so it is like uh, there was a person whom I knew well. He was uh, keeping a uh, cow in his uh, home. In the backyard he used to keep a cow. He has some religious uh, sentiment about it. Cow is sacred, uh, etc. In India we have it. So he was keeping the cow. But the cow was not giving any milk to him. He was not giving any milk. <laughs> and when he tried to get some milk out of the cow, it kicked. It only it administers a kick. And he was injured also, some sp sprain or what happened, this cow. And I, he, he was uh, about to beat the cow. I said, don't do that. So he too understood. Out of his uh, frustration, he was about to beat it. But then I was there. I stopped him. Yeah, yeah, I, do, I should not beat it. He do namaskar like this and walk away. But frustration, where it will go? He was so much frustrated with that cow. The, the moment you mention the word cow, he, he becomes unhappy. There is a cloud passing through his face. Very, I was seeing him all the time, elderly person. And at last he got rid of that cow. He gave away or whatever. Then there was some peace in his, in his face. He became normal. So these meditators are like this. They are uh, very frustrated people. And that's why very angry people. We should be very cautious with them. And otherwise he becomes angry and he will shout at you and all that. Because that pent up anger and frustration it comes out. That is happening because of this concentration business. You try concentration yourself, you will be frustrated yourself. Nigraha kinkarishyati, Shri Krishna, Are, you want to hold it back, nothing will happen. So, I don't remember the entire verse, something to that effect. And then they put uh, some other uh, confusion in the people's mind. Some other confusion. It is a sad saga of misinformation. For centuries it is happening. Sad saga of misinformation. He says that there is Moladhara. Moladhara is there. You are all sitting on Moladhara only. <laughs> Everybody has Moladhara. Not only the meditator. And then uh, Swadhisthana. Swadhisthana is the digestive fire. What a big deal. Everybody has it. Manipura. Manipura is a navel. And in the West, uh, these, these ladies or girls, they put a gemstone. <laughs> when I saw that, saw that I did not want to see her. Any such thing. It so happened that uh, you end up seeing it. Then I thought, <laughs> Manipura. Manipura, yes. Manipura. What Manipura? 
the anatomy looks like a kind of a money. That is what it is. And the pora is a feeling, something. And then, uh, so something, anahata, like that, uh, some, uh, some good Sanskrit names you put to it. And then uh, create a system out of it. And then uh, spread it around. And people uh, go after that. Oh, is uh, sound problem is there? Yeah. Once I went to Kovur for a series of talks. Kovur is a town in Andhra Pradesh. And the talks are going on. My, my own usual uh, talks are going on. There are a group of people. These are the meditators. A dozen of them. They wanted a personal appointment. They come and sit in the class. Class we will see, but we want to have an appointment with you. Oh, please come. They came in the morning. They told us, this is the, this meditation thing was told to us by a guru in Chennai or somewhere, a big guru. And uh, that guru, why, why the guru is big? Because he has a big temple. That's why the guru is big. What is uh, so great about the temple? No, it is golden temple. That's why the guru is big. Eh? Uh, so, that Guru has uh, given this method to these people and they were struggling for six months that something will go up, etc. Now, what will go up? Nothing will go up. You are imagining. You are just imagining. Nothing will go up. So, either you become more intelligent, that can happen, if you understand correctly. Otherwise, physiology is physiology. And uh, so, if you do Viparita Karani, some blood will go into the head. <laughs> that kind of a thing can happen. Other than that, all this propaganda uh, has no meaning. And so, they are saying, uh, we could not get anything out of it, so we want you to advise us. I told first thing is, give it up. Don't hold on to that. You say with Shankara, Name dharana dhyana yoga adayu You say it. And so, therefore, uh, Meditation is, uh, you begin with the mind, but go beyond the mind. That is what meditation is. For example, meditation is the emptying the mind of all thoughts. Allow the mind to become empty. First of all, first principle of meditation I started describing, that is be aware, not concentration, not, not concentrate, be aware. When you, in what is awareness? You are aware of whatever is. Whatever is, you are aware. Whatever thought is, you are aware of it. You are not trying to push it away. You are not trying to hold on to a given thought. Means there is no agenda whatsoever. Then, uh, when you are aware of uh, the mo movement of mind, just be aware, whatever is. Sometimes uh, the thought that you notice in the mind, uh, in the thought process, is not such a nice thought. Some silly thought has come. Uh, some, uh, some sometimes a fear may come, sometimes a desire may come, or sometimes some reprehensible thought also may come, any thought may come, sometimes some silly thought may come, whatever thought comes, just be aware of it. Don't cling to it, don't judge it, don't condemn it, don't uh, try to throw it out, and don't feel anything bad about it, whatever be the thought, just be aware of it. That is meditation. And uh, in that awareness, there is no effort. Because awareness is not effort. Awareness is not karma, jnanam versus karma. And there is no effort. And therefore, your energy is conserved, if, you, if I can say so. That is the way of saying it, that you don't get worked up, you don't get stressed out, and there is no dissipation of energy. And uh, you feel, uh, you feel uh, fresh in your awareness. That is what meditation. So, you see, uh, thought, movement of thought is necessary. So, suppose uh, you, uh, you empty your mind of all thoughts and sit in one place like a statue, then uh, who will uh, prepare food and who will go here and there? Not that way. Not that way. So, thought process is, is necessary for producing mechanical activities. Like you have to go here, get some vegetables from the market, do, you have to do a few things here and there. That kind of mechanical activities which are necessary part of human existence, uh, it, uh, they, are they happen only because of the thought process. Without the thought process, how can you live? So they are important. They will be there. We are not talking about any of that. 
so they, they will be there but but i ask you a question do you want the whole day the mind to be full of uh, the mechanical activities and the concerned thoughts all the time or uh, you want freedom from this thought process connected to mechanical activities of existence like roti kapda makan kind of activities and then mind must be engaged in all that true um, and so to the extent required mind is engaged in all that but then once that part of it is taken care you want freedom from the mechanical activities or not you want freedom from the mind that is what you want so you want the mind to do its job where it is required and when the mind job is not required you do not need the the support of the mind you should have the freedom from the mind that is what you need you don't need a, a mechanism by which you control the mind you keep the mind you don't need all that hmm? it is like keeping a dog and uh, doing a service to it whole day you don't need it you need freedom from that you need freedom from that okay so so there must be freedom so from the movement of mind from the thought process if you will so you need freedom no no without thought process how can we live apa you live with that process only you keep all the required thought process for living but uh, you understand you you cannot be stuck with the thought process of some kind or the other the entire waking state that will make you sick and that uh, will make that will dissipate energy the constantly thinking mind dissipates energy again and therefore you need freedom from that freedom from that mechanical uh, from the thought process and the meditation is just that that freedom from the the restlessness of the mind from the hyperactivity of the mind you need freedom from that okay that is all you need and that is meditation that freedom is meditation meditation should uh, should give us freedom not uh, struggle and conflict and then uh, a draining of energy in the name of meditation you can't do that so some people world is a crazy world they take a wooden piece and put at the muladhara and sit on it why wooden piece so at the base of the spine if that wooden piece will be pushing up with a pressure and then uh, the um, the kundalini will rise kya bola so there is no end to this madness in this world people are uh, deeply misinformed therefore uh, so you need freedom from the thought process of the mind you need uh, the the advantage of the thought process also for uh, daily existence etc but you need some freedom also and uh, so how to get this freedom from the thought process the thought process should not become excessive and we need some freedom from it how to get so by concentration you can never get by concentration dharana dhyana samadhi is not going to give you that freedom it will uh, bind you in conflict so and uh, suppose you uh, you prompt the thought into thinking in a particular way that is the concentration that doesn't work then uh, suppose uh, uh you do prayer to patanjali the the prayer thing it is so prayer is okay but prayer is not the panacea for everything you know so you have to do what you have to do you don't do what is required but then do prayer how it will work so uh, so then uh, if i talk like that you say so my tv is against prayer i am not against prayer i am against the self pity associated with prayer for your information that kind of a prayer has no value and uh, so uh, patanjali you make a prayer of patanjali and then uh, you make another prayer another prayer so mind becomes quiet it won't become quiet it is jumping from prayer to prayer to prayer all the time so 
uh, and that becomes a mechanical process again. Uh, the thought process becomes mechanical and it, it, it burdens you because the same thing, uh, it becomes a routine uh, and uh, mechanical and the mind becomes dull. You put the mind on a mechanical thing, that is the formula for making the mind blunted and dull. So, when the mind becomes dull and blunted, they, they, they believe that now we have reached Samadhi or whatever. You have not reached Samadhi, your mind has become blunted, that's all. Nothing more than that. And uh, so, if anybody points out, you get, you get frustrated also. And so, anger, Sesham Kopena Purayet. So, show anger upon him. So, so, anyway, coming to the point, you need freedom from the thought process. And that freedom you cannot accomplish by uh, engage, trying to engage the thought with certain given thing that is not the way, not by elaborate prayers and all that. Prayers become vikshepa. Karma itself is a vikshepa. Karma vikshepa ha, vato hai. That, that expression is there, karma vikshepa. And then, uh, then, then uh, you see what happens is uh, the words and the images they can have a hypnotic effect. That is how habit works. So, uh, so you you put your focus on uh, the words, uh, the, some image, and therefore uh, you just uh, have that image and continue with that image. Uh, then uh, that image uh, it can have a hypnotic effect, and uh, therefore it it makes you believe that something is happening. And there may be some water can flow also out of uh, eyes. Even that can happen. You see, that hypnotic effect is, you see, one gentleman told me, and uh, so the, the, the gentleman is around here, I don't know. So somebody is going into that hypnosis, oh, Radhe, 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 like that some hypnosis is about to go into it. Radhe, Arayappa or something, into that hypnotic effect. Then this person told you, so <laughs> I will slap you if you continue, if you take it forward, I will slap you. Then he kept a quiet little belt away. That is how it works. Therefore, uh, all of that uh, is not meditation. Those images, the words, they, they are rather, rather, uh, you go into some hypnotic effect. That is not meditation. Some image, oh, image, uh, so something, uh, that is not, uh, Shiva is dancing, this and that. That kind of a hypnotic effect, it, it is not meditation. You have to discard, dismiss all these things. All these have to come to an end. How to come to an end? Not by effort. Ending also needs effort, but not by effort, by understanding. With understanding, they all come to an end. I put it this way, in the flame of awareness, Jnanagni, Jnana is awareness. In the flame of awareness, means you are aware of what is going on. This is all the game of the mind. The mind is playing uh, all these uh, tricks. And the mind uh, can play all kinds of tricks uh, with us. And so this is the game of the mind. And I am not the mind. I am not uh, all these activities of the mind. And so people come out with all these mechanisms of dharana, dhyana, etc. about mind. Not for me, yeah, not for me. You keep it with yourself, God bless you, not for me. And uh, then uh, you become free, there is freedom from the thought process. You allow the mind to become empty of thoughts. Emptiness is not blankness. Don't try to catch my nose, for God's sake. Blankness is by habit, you, the mind becomes blank. By habit, you repeat the same thing again and again and again, go on counting, counting and repeat it ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times. That Then the mind becomes blank. That is dullness, blunted mind, that is the blankness of mind. And you lose whatever little capacity you had of thinking. That is blankness, not emptiness is not blankness. So, therefore, when the, in that flame of awareness, you become aware of the thought process and allow it to go uh, in the given direction. And then you don't need it anymore, the job is done. And therefore, you just be aware of it, it becomes silent. And watch the mind. I will come to it again for that. 
and as you watch the mind, as you are, same as watch is aware, same, one and the same, as you are aware of the mind, it starts settling down, and it functions when needed, and when not needed, it keeps quiet, and you remain awareful, alert, attentive, full of attention, that is called Apramadaha by Bhagavan Buddha, that is what is what you need. That is what you need. I made a big deal of it to make the point very clear to you. Did I put it in a cogent way to you, without any confusion? So I have covered the entire ground of this meditation thing in a, in brief. And finally, we arrived at what is called the flame of attention, which is Atma, which is Brahma. That is what you need. Not you can say with Shankara, Name. Dharana, Dhyana, Yoga, Dayopi, even these exotic things like Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, etc., Api, even these things which are very exotic, which are highly acclaimed in the world of spirituality or whatever name you give to it, all of that is great, that Api has a lot of meaning, all of that is great, but not for me, Mujhe Chhod Do, okay, so we will come back. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnamada